When it comes to cooking family style, it's not just about the food you're cooking or the style of clothes you're wearing while you're cooking. It's really about the experience cooking and eating together creates for a child. It's priceless, which is why we thought, what better and fancier experience than a tea party? I'm here at British Bell in Newark People's Plaza, where I'm about to buy a spot of tea for just that. Let's go check this place out. Here at British Bell, you can either take tea to go, among other things, from their tea shop where I am right now, or you can go to the dining room, enjoy the full tea party experience, which I'm going to let you in a little secret. If you mention this show when you're here dining in, they'll give you 20% off your bill. I'm going for the dining experience. get ready for the show. I thought it was only fitting if I sipped on some tea and nibbled on some tea party snacks to get prepared for the real star of the show, Eliza Freeman, who will be joining me to prepare this traditional tea party feast, which will be complete with cucumber and lemon dill cream cheese sandwiches, decadent lemon scones, and mini chocolate cupcakes. Of course I'll wash down with tea. So stay tuned to watch this fun family style spread come together in true tea party fashion. Welcome to Tea Time on the Red Clay Cook-Off Family Style. And let's just say I am beyond ecstatic to have Eliza Freeman join me for a spot of tea and delicious bite-sized savory and sweet snacks. So whether you're watching this in the afternoon, morning, or evening, there's always time for tea. If you are as anxious as me to get this party started, let's turn the clock to tea time and have Eliza join me in the kitchen and start baking. Come on. Can't see my dear. So nice to have you. Thank you. Yeah, you all set? Yep. It's tea time. You ready for tea time? Yeah. All right. So, so Eliza, I don't actually do tea time that much. This is kind of one of my first tea time traditions for me. So you, you're going I'm always going to think of you every time I have tea now. I'm super excited. And Yay. it gave me an excuse to buy a dress and get pearls. Yep. We both have pearls on. Yep. All right. So in doing a lot of research on um, tea time, I learned a lot about where the traditions of tea came from. Do you, have you ever looked into where the tradition of afternoon tea came from? Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. I do not have any time. <laughs> well, I know you're extremely busy. School, school's tough. Yeah. So I did a little research and where it started was with the Duchess of Bedford, Duchess Anna, and she would always get hungry around four o'clock between lunch and dinner. So she'd have a spot of tea and some snacks every day. It became a tradition and she started inviting people over and that's where the tea party tradition really stemmed from. So we are going to have our tea party today. Do you remember when we met before we talked about in a tea party tradition, there's different tiers of items that you eat. So do you remember what the tiers are? Yeah, first you, first you have sandwiches, then you have some scones, and then you have sweet dessert. Perfect, we are gonna make all three of those today, right? Yay. Yay, we're so excited. While in true tea party tradition, as Eliza mentioned, the sweet, the cupcakes, which are we are making today, are usually served last, but on today's show, we're gonna start with the cupcakes so we can get them baked and give them time to cool before icing. So you ready to get yeah. started? Do you wanna start with, how about you start with the wet ingredients? Okay. Okay, now what do you think is the most important thing to start with? We're gonna start with what? The butter. The butter, and we have it room temperature cold? Room temperature, yeah. okay. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in. Let me get you a knife. Whole stick. Whole stick of butter, so a half a cup of butter. It's gonna slide right in there, so one stick of butter 
is a half a cup. And then we are going to measure the sugar. And we have three quarters of a cup of white sugar. So I'm going to use that one. And we'll give this to you to level. Go ahead, level it off. So we've got three quarters of a cup of granulated white sugar. Go ahead and pour that in. Perfecto. And then we also have a, ha a half a cup of brown sugar in this recipe. And brown sugar gives a little bit more of a different flavor, but yes. it's nice. So That's we'll try that. That's this. right. And you can use that. And what's, do, you, do you know what's important when you use brown sugar? What are you supposed to do? Pack it Pack in there. It in. Pack yeah. it in there. So go ahead. Did Pack this that at sugar the house in there. with the flour. <laughs> it didn't come out. It didn't come out. We just made a mess. But that's fun, right? Mm hmm You look back at the mess on your floor, and while yeah, the cleanup is a little bit sometimes tough, it, it makes you know that you made, you, did, you made some delicious food. Yeah. Right? I okay. make a mess a lot. Now, level. Leveling it off, and I will get this out of your way for you. And we are just going to go ahead and cream that together. That was cool. What do you think? Pop it on down. And we have a paddle attachment on here. Do you want to go ahead and I will start it for you. Needs a little more time, huh? Yeah. We'll turn it up a notch. Whoop. And we're going to cream together the butter and sugar. Like and that's a really important it. step. It's like a dance. It's like a little song. The sound of baking. You think we could make it? Should we, should we make our own lyrics and make a song, The Sound of Baking? Yeah. Okay. I would sing The Sound of Music is what comes to my head, but I'm not, my singing voice isn't, you know, isn't the best. I mean, I sing a lot. I don't really like my singing voice, but I sing oh, a lot. Oh, I'm sure you have a fabulous singing voice. Thank you. All right. You think that's incorporated yeah. nice? Yeah. And then what do we, we would add the egg next? Yeah. Do you want to crack the egg? You can either crack into that bowl, we can crack into the cup. Your call. I think we should crack into a cup to make, to guarantee that we have no shell. Egg shells. I don't know. Do you ever had an egg shell in a cupcake? It's like, it's like an extra crunch. No? No. I'm just kidding. That's that's not good. You can pop your shell right back in that say, bowl. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you, you thought I seriously had eggshell cupcakes? Pop it right in here, sweetie. There we go. Go right on in. So we're adding one egg to one stick of butter, three quarters of a cup of white sugar, and a half a cup of brown sugar. I'll mix that really well. I already want to eat it. You already want to eat it? So this is something that um, some cupcakes have it and some cupcakes don't. It's espresso. You can use espresso powder or you can use espresso. So we have some espresso and you can put in one tablespoon of that. And the purpose of the espresso powder is to really enhance the, the flavor of the chocolate. So that's what that is doing in this recipe. And does and it give it in. coffee flavor? You won't taste it. You'll just eat a cupcake and you'll be zing, 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 really hyper. I'm just kidding. You won't be. And how about the vanilla? Do you want to add the vanilla too now? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is your favorite, right? Vanilla? Yeah. You want to do two, tees two teaspoons because you like vanilla? I think the recipe calls for one and a one and a half, but you can do two if you if it fits your fancy. Yep. Okay. All right. Go ahead and turn that mixer on and get them mixed together. What do you think? Is it mixed nice and good? Oh, not too. Turn this up. That's oh, look at that. And it smells beautiful. Smell the vanilla? Oh, oh heavenly. I this smell. Heavenly. Vanilla. All right. How about we get started on the dry? What do you think? Yeah. All right, you can turn that off if you want. Now, the creaming of the butter and the sugars adds a lot of air, and it makes the cupcakes fluffy and light. Yeah. So it's really important when you're fluffy baking. Cupcakes. Fluffy cupcakes are extravagant. So we're going to, how about you do the flour for me? There you go. Ooh, and there's oh your, oh, it's a lot of flour. I need to Puff. pack it in, because I love <laughs> to pack in. And just level it off. And using the back of the knife for the butter knife is really nice to get a nice leveled. And if you use this side, you'll have little. Bumps. Yeah, that no good. Okay, pop that on on here. Ah! I like this. We're gonna get these tea party dresses messy, aren't we? Just a wee bit. Next, we have a half a cup of cocoa powder, and the cocoa powder is obviously what makes mm. our cupcakes chocolate cupcakes. So you can pop that in there if you want. That's already pre-measured. Oh, okay. This. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And we will mix these all together. And it's really important with the dry ingredients that you do mix them all together before you add them to the wet. So we're going to get to that point eventually. We're going to get them all in the same bowl first. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Not too much and salt. And we're just using traditional salt. And then you're going to do a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And these are good to help lift the, lift the cupcakes. And then you're going to do baking oh powder. Sorry, same thing. Okay, level this off. 
All right, perfect. Now how about we take a whisk and mix these together. And go ahead and do that, and then we will add the... Whisk. It's a mini whisk. I love mini whisk. Is it big whisks. enough? Does it do the trick? Yeah. So what we're going to do now is she's mixing the dry ingredients together and then we're actually going to add the dry to the wet, incorporate them just ever so slightly because if you overmix, what happens? It, it becomes more dense. Yeah, nobody wants a dense cupcake. That's more like a muffin at that point, right? Yeah. And then we're going to add in three quarters of a cup of buttermilk to finish off the recipe. So we will yep. go ahead and do that whenever you're ready. How do you think you want to go ahead and add this, add this dry? Do you want to use the, how about we use a measuring cup so we don't make okay. a humongo mess, just a, just a mini mess. And I'll go ahead and get this started on a slow speed so we don't over mix. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and add the dry. And then when we get after one more, we'll go ahead and pick it up so we don't over mix them. Yeah. And it is going to be, at this point, it's going to be a little bit, the texture is not going to be your traditional cupcake because we're actually waiting to add the buttermilk last. last. I'm actually going to go like this. Is that okay? How about yeah. you use your, get your, get your fingers in there. You're supposed to use. Those are your best, best kitchen tools, right? Mm-hmm. I'll eat the leftover powder on my <laughs> It smells so good. It smells like a chocolate factory, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you ever seen Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory? Oh, uh, yeah. We oh, watched yeah. it in school. Do you think there's a real place like that where you can just walk around the candy world? I hope so. I think so, too. Whoop, whoop, whoop. A little too fast. All yeah, right. And what just... do you think? Let's add the buttermilk last. Yeah. Add that in. It, it looks like fudge is happening in there. It looks really good. And we're going to add the buttermilk. It'll thin it out nicely. Go ahead and pour it on in. You don't have to add it slowly. <laughs> doop, doop, doop. <laughs> I'm going to turn this speed up ever so slightly. There's some, you know, we'll get it all in there off the top. And we have a paddle attachment on here, which is perfect for baking cupcakes and things. If you were to use a, um, a dough attachment, that's more for bread. Okay, get this mixer off. I'm going to come behind you. And how about before we go scooping, you give this one little good twirl with that spatula. Make sure we got all the good stuff off the side. What do you think? I already see some oh, While she's doing that, I will get the cupcake pan we have back here. Make sure you don't lose all that goodness we just made. And we have a cupcake pan that already has the cupcake wrap wrappers in here, so it's ready to scoop and bake, right? And we right? have little mini cupcakes. Look how pretty. So pretty. I love these. They're, you can use them to make like little races because yeah. they're like that size. Our cupcakes are pretty and pink today. Yep. All right. What do you think? You want to use this? Yep. Okay. Go on in. First, just scoop off of there. You can pop it right in there. The ice cream scooper, you don't have to use an ice cream scooper, but it does work nice um, in this um, recipe, especially when if you are cooking with, with kids, it's a fun way to get them involved and make sure that all the cupcakes are nice and level, um, evenly made at the end. And, and that just looks so good. So what is your favorite thing to bake? Do you usually like to bake cupcakes, cookies, um, cakes? Everything. Everything. So you're just an extraordinaire yep. when it comes to baking. I love baking. So we're going to finish scooping this last cupcake and then we're going to pop these into the oven, which has been preheated to 350 degrees, and they're going to cook for about 12 to 15 minutes until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. So I'm going to turn around and do that. Okay. Pop these in there. They look so good. Hot. All right. Make sure the batter's good. And we do have enough batter to do a whole nother batch. Ooh. She's going for it. How is it? Should I try some too? All right, fine. Going in. I got it all over my hands. And I think I this cocoa. stuff is cocoa espresso. This, it's nice, right? Yeah. It enhances the flavor. Yeah, last time we didn't use it. No. That and then is, this time we did use it. Oh, and it's nothing, <laughs> it's nothing shy <laughs> of extraordinary. You, should I just get you a spoon and I'll make the royal icing flowers? Because that's what we're doing next. You sure? We yep. can finish that in the break. We're not going to make the second batch. We're just going to eat it. Yeah. Plain. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started with our royal icing flowers. I like it. So we have pink and green at your request for our flowers. So let's get started. So what we're going to do now is we are going to make some royal icing flowers while those cupcakes bake. And then we're going to move on to our scones and tea sandwiches. So we're kind of experts at this, right? Yeah. We practiced. Totally. We conquered. Yeah. All right. So I will make your 
So this is, this is, I don't know the exact name of this. Do you know the name? The rose, rose like nail. She's, like she rose calls nail? it a rose nail. Is that what it is? That sounds, that sounds perfecto. I'll do the green, you do the pink. Okay. So this is called royal icing, and, and I actually have never, had never heard of royal icing until you told me about royal icing. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's really important with this that you take the, the thin end and you just twirl. I can boop, 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 boop. There's one petal. Do you think we can make like a rose? We can on the break. We will make little white roses and they will be so exquisite. I will try again. It's not my best flower, but... It's better than mine. <laughs> I'm Last sure yours time. would be fantastic. You're gonna try one, right? No. <laughs> Last time I just it's a flower. Put, I just put all, Go ahead, all the royal icing on one. And the royal icing stem. as it sits out, it gets really hard and it, it almost stem. forms like a hard candy. Yeah, I mean, you I turned my flower into something just absolutely perfect. Well, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to go to a quick break. So we will go ahead and do this one last. Do, should I do a bigger, bigger petals? Sure. Well, can I get in and do it? Okay. And twist and turn. I think that's the really important part. That's why the, the, this little gadget Rose here. Rose nail. Thank you for continuing to remind <laughs> me. I don't know why I can't get that. Is so important. It's a bigger flower. It is. It's going to take a little bit to get ready. Let's just, I'll just compare once we're done and then add the, oh my. Trying to make Don't them. forget the leaf. The leaf is what made it. Eliza and I are going to continue being rural icing experts while we take a quick break. So make sure you come back to see what we have made here. What rural icing decorations. Our cupcakes are actually finished and they smell so good. And they're cooling on the baking rack behind us, waiting for their chance to become even more decadent with buttercream icing, right? So we're gonna go ahead and check on them. Now, what's the best way to check to see if a baked good is done, do you know? Uh, stick a toothpick through. Or do you wanna do the honors? Sure. All right, there you go. That's a very fancy It good is. Which one? I think whatever one fits your fancy. They're it should cooked. come out a little bit easier. They're cooked and it came out perfectly clean. So there's nothing on one it, more. so that's nice. Yeah. So the cupcakes are done, yeah, and we're going to go ahead and icing them. But in the meantime, we're going to get started on our lemon, lemon scones. And afternoon tea is an afternoon tea without scones, right? Yeah. So let's get started on them. How about you start zesting the lemon? The zest of the lemon has so much flavor. It really packs in a lot of flavor. I love zest. Yeah. And as you learned during our quick break, it is really important to mix the wet and dry separate and then combine the ingredients. But with scones, we're going to do that, but a little bit different technique because scones are more flaky. So with cupcakes, it's important to cream the butter. But when it comes to something like scones or biscuits, you actually do something called cutting the butter. So we're going to do that. And I actually learned a new technique today. You actually grate the butter and it makes the flakes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What do you think? Grating the butter. It's oh, like grating wow. cheese. I know, right? Oh, wow. This just makes small I've never little seen grates. That. Me neither. Not until today. Not that. Mm. Some of the juice. And we have three quarters of a cup of butter here, so one and a half sticks of butter. What is the purpose? Do you know the purpose of grating the butter? Or to making the it, small, small pieces? To make it flaky. Flaky. And over here we have three cups of all-purpose flour that we are going to add the butter to in a moment. So again, if you don't want to use the grater, you don't have to use the grating technique. Just cut it into small pieces. Just cut it into small pieces. Okay. So to the flour, I'm actually going to add one third a cup of sugar, granulated sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and whisk the flour and sugar together to incorporate the dry. I'm still zesting this lemon. And then I'm going to actually add the butter. Mm. Gonna, you can see the butter is grated inside there. It looks just like cheddar cheese, right? Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and... That's awesome. It is pretty awesome. Scoop that out. Make sure not to ruin. I know. So we have one and a half sticks in here, three quarters of a cup. Grating butter technique. It's not my finest moment. Mix one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Which this is really important. You actually want to do this before you do the butter. I'm just going to mix that around in here. And now I'm going to get messy and go in there with my hands. What do you think? Yeah. Does that sound good? So, I'm putting my hands in this lemon, so. When you make scones, it really is messy. Remember how much of a mess we made with the oh. butter? Oh, yeah. It was a mess. We used the, the pa we, we actually had a pastry cutter, instead we used a potato masher, right? Yeah. So you really just want to work your hands through the butter. 
close to being done. So we have now worked the butter through the flour pretty well. And you can also, if you want to make this much faster and a little less messy, you can cube the butter and put the flour, all the dry ingredients, baking soda, baking powder, salt and flour in a food processor. And just give it a quick pulse and that usually does a nice job of incorporating the butter. So thank you so much. You have zested, zested about five lemons here. And I am going to go ahead and have you squeeze the lemon juice. We have yes. a strainer to catch the seeds, right? Mm -hmm. But you can always have one of those fancy uh, squeezers here. You know what? Let me teach you a little trick. Ready? Tuck, stick the fork in there and then squeeze around oh, the okay. fork. Okay. And move your hand around it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Yep. There we go. So I'll add a stick. Stick it in. Oh. <laughs> and turn just like you did with the, uh, what's that thing called again? Rose nail. Just yeah. twist and turn. Twist and Oopsie. turn. Oopsie. You okay? I just got all the seeds No out. big deal. So it smells absolutely wonderful in here from the lemon zest. The lemon zest has so much flavor and a lot of people always forget about it and actually don't use it, but it really does pack a huge punch when it comes to flavor. So I'm adding two, two and a half teaspoons of lemon zest. And we have a lot here because we're also going to use this in the lemon glaze as well as the um, cucumber dill sandwiches with the cream cheese spread. And then um, can we sprinkle a little bit of lemon on top? Oh, to for a little accent? Yeah. That would be very nice. And how are we doing on that lemon juice? Think we've got a lot? And you can go on to the next one. Here, I'll take a couple. We'll do it together. Look at all those seeds I got out. Look at that. We can plant ourselves a lemon tree. These are some nice lemons. Oh, I can see the different colors. Yeah, different color seeds. I don't know about you, but my stomach's growling. I think I'm, I'm hungry. I want some scones. I'll do this last one. I would want to drink this lemon, but... You're going to taste like... Some taste. You're going to smell like lemon when you leave, because I think I'm squirting you with it, aren't I? Yeah. That's all right. Freshen you up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure oh, three. My hands. Oh, so fresh and so clean. All right, two and three. Yeah. I think it was actually three oh. and a half. Yeah. Three and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, two and a half tablespoons of lemon zest, and then last but not least is a half a cup of milk plus one tablespoon. So with scones, you can see that there's a lot more dry than there is wet. We're just gonna incorporate it a little bit. A spatula is also nice, but we're gonna incorporate a little bit with a spoon and then we are going to again go in there with our hands, <laughs> little tongs, and I'm going to mix this. Do you want to mix this? Wait, wait, wait. Do you want to get your hands dirty? I think I... Uh, with me? How about okay. you do this? Okay. So go ahead and get in there and she's just working this the butter, butter and the this flour. This butter is very flaky. It is very flaky. So while you're doing that, I am going to prep our board. It's really important when you're with scones, you really <laughs> need the dough. And we need to eat these, don't we? Yeah. Get my pun there? Need. Uh -huh. Get it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna grab some flour. I'm gonna flour our board. We are making a big old mess. Put a little bit of flour on the board. Not too much. Just a, just a wee bit more. And then, and. oh, 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 oh. Wonder. Oh, the butler. He is working, he's earning his money today. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Oopsie. Ooh, this recipe is. It does pull together. It, it really, scones really are dry. And then when they tend to, when you roll them together and pull, really pull the dough together, it really does work in nice. But you are getting a tricep workout when you're making these. No need to go to the gym. Just yeah. make some scones. Just, exactly. It's like, and then, and then I can eat them, right? Yeah. Skip my workout and eat scones. It's a beautiful day. Okay, I think she's ready to roll out here. And there's a lot of. There's a lot of crumbs if you want to throw them in. And when you knead the dough, yeah, just put that. really want to work right there. into the dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we've kneaded this for about two minutes. We are going to form a little circle here. You did this at my house. How come I'm doing this? I'll do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I just wash my hands. I know. I wouldn't make you do that. All right. So you really want to knead this to a circle. Pat it down. And kneading really kind of stretches the dough, and that's how you get that nice, Make crispy, sure flaky thin. texture. Because if it's too thick. No good. No good. All right, how's that look? Perfect. Perfect. Do you want me oh. to sprinkle a little bit of zest? zest? On the top? Boop, boop, boop. Oh Don't want a big clump. How about you do me a favor while I, again, use this big old knife? Can you grab me that pan back there? I want to cut it. Do you want to cut it? Okay, 
Be careful, you know how to hold the end of the knife? Yeah. Don't put your hands in there. Go ahead and cut it straight down. So we're gonna cut it like a pizza pie. Get... Got it. And you can do the rest. Yeah. <laughs> now what am I doing? Just grabbing me the pan right there. Pan, 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 ah, oh, pan. And you can cut these into whatever size you want today. We are going to work with eight triangles here. You can do different shapes. We like triangles, right? Yeah. Go ahead and pop can them I on there for me. Like a little heart at the top. If you want to, making that's them like fun. very tall. We can. It's like a triangle it with a little heart. There you go. What do you think? Ta da! Boom. Boop, boop. There boom, you go. Boom, boom, boom. It's not a really average <laughs> heart. I think it's beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and pop these. Clean off my hands a little bit there. Pop these in the oven, which is also preheated to 350 degrees, and they'll cook for about 12 to 14 minutes, which is about the same time as the cupcakes. So you really could bake these at the same time. There we go. So they're going to get baking. What you're going to look for is the edges to be nice, nice and brown. Crisp. Um, yeah, and they're both going to be as equally delicious as the cupcakes. How about you work the dust butler real quick, and while we take a quick break to test how flaky your baking knowledge is, flaky. It's Oh, yeah. I know. All right, stay tuned. It's time for the Red Clay Nutrition Trivia Challenge. It's best to work with what temperature butter and liquid when making scones, pastries, or biscuits? A, room temperature. B, melted. C, ice cold. Find out after this short break. School, it is often considered the safest place for our children. We know where they are and trust that they are in good hands. However, before they arrive, our child's day begins and ends with a short journey on a school bus. They travel on their all too familiar roads, their minds afforded the time to daydream, play or rest. So when other motorists frequently ignore the laws, like failing to stop when the school bus's red lights are flashing and the stop arm is extended, this can happen. In the past decade, over 300 school-age children have been killed in transportation-related crashes. That is over 300 too many. Do not rush the red. Failing to do so puts precious lives at risk. As a country, we need to do better. We must keep our children safe. Hello, I'm State Representative Kim Williams. You just saw the footage. Laura was thrown from a bus entrance when a car disregarded the red lights and hit the bus she was boarding. Luckily, the car missed her, but not every child has been so lucky. Terrible tragedies have taken place in our country over the past year. That's why I introduced House Bill 111, Laura's Law, which allows school districts and charters to place cameras on the exterior of the school bus, clearly capturing the license plates of the drivers who disregard a stop school bus and the red flashing lights. More drivers will be caught and fines will be tougher. The purpose of this bill is to protect children at the most dangerous point in their commutes to school while they're getting on or off a school bus. I think we all can agree the safety of our children depends on it. Thank you. And we're back. Did you guess correctly? Well, let's find out. It's best to work with what temperature butter and liquid when making scones, pastries, or biscuits. The answer is C, ice cold. It's best to work with cold butter and liquid in order to achieve a flaky texture. If the butter is warm, you will get fewer lumps throughout the dough and a less flaky pastry. So, chill your butter and liquids if a flaky pastry is what you're looking for. Now, let's get back to the show. Well, how did you do on the quiz? Think you can make the perfect pastry crust and scone? Let's see how we did with our perfect scones. Look at those, aren't they beautiful? Yeah. They're so flaky. And during the break, we also made our cucumber sandwiches, which traditionally you use a very thin sliced bread, which you are going to sample for everyone. And what we have is a cream cheese that we whipped with a hand mixer, a little bit of mayonnaise, some fresh dill, a little bit of that lemon that you worked so hard to zest, and a little bit of lemon juice. Would you mind passing me a sandwich so we can get our plates assembled? And then the, traditionally, with the British tea party tradition, you do remove the crust from the bread, right? And then we have an English cucumber, which means it's a seedless cucumber, and they work out nicely. I don't have as much moisture. So next week, would you mind passing me a scone? Because we have to have our tea party snacks all assembled. 
They look so good. I'm a huge fan of scones. There's the heart one. Yeah. Look at that. You can keep that one. And I will take yeah. this one. This was my attempt at a heart. There we go. We have our lemon scones. Perfect. And then what we're going to do for the final touch is we are actually going to icing the last few cupcakes. Go ahead, girl. So we have buttercream in a piping bag. Do you want to hold it so you can either, let me show you, do you you're an expert. <laughs> She's like, I got this. Go ahead. Look at that twirly magic you've got going on. So good. Ha. Huh. I mean, I, don't, I probably shouldn't even do any. And look what happened to our Aurora icing flower. Didn't we do a really good job? Yeah. I mean, we're pretty much really good. Yeah. Those burl icing flowers. Okay, that one so. just go there. There you go. Do these last few. And while she does that, I am going to pop the star of our show, the tea. This is called Blooming Tea. It's a flowering green tea. I must say, this is a first for me. Pop that in. All right. And she'll get bloom in there while we continue finishing our baked products. So you see, as we were talking earlier, the layers. We have the tea sandwiches at the bottom, the lemon scones in the middle, and then you always finish a tea party with the, the sweet, which in this case is our cupcakes. So we have our final layer is on there. We have our cupcakes. They are done. How about you pick yourself the prettiest flower? I think it was probably the one that, that we did, right? There you go. I think I want that guy right here. Let me think. Look at that. Man, we and are no. really good. Do you want to try these while our, while our tea continues to bloom? How about we try? Oh, wait, hold on. There's, don't do this for looks, but <laughs> for taste. For taste, you have to add a little bit more. Would you like a little um, cupcake with your icing? Or? So we have to start with this, right? Yeah. Ready? Mine's a little taller than yours. Okay. Good, right? Mm -hmm. The lemon is nice, very refreshing. For this recipe, you can go to Red Clay Cafe and check out the cucumber dill cream cheese crustless sandwiches. All right, so what's next? What do we go to next in a traditional tea party? Scones. Scones. Uh, or like it's pizza. like the mix between. Mm -hmm. Sweet, savory. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Very nice. I like the glaze. The glaze is good. The glaze will also be in the recipe on Red Clay Cafe. It's a combination of milk and powdered sugar. I could just eat this with a cup of coffee, in this case tea, obviously. All right, let's try this last boy. I think I'm, are you gonna keep the flour? Let's just try a little bite. I want to keep the flour for last. Oh, okay. I jumped ahead. Mm. That is the perfect way to end a tea party. Uh, Duchess Anna was onto something, don't you think? I think she was. That's a really nice flow mm. of food. What do you think? Should I tuck my napkin? No, right into the pearls? No, it looks weird. Got our pretty napkins, which our napkins even have pearls. Look at that. All Everything right. has pearls. Everything has pearls. Well, that does it for our tea party snacks. But let's not forget the star of the show. Not you. The tea. Look how oh. pretty the tea looks. I'm just kidding, you are the star of the show. But considering it's a tea party, we probably want to put a little emphasis on the tea, right? Well, Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. That beautiful. is so cool. And it smells, smells really good. So it's kind of like a green tea. So it's a very light tea. So how about I pour some tea? And the longer you let this steep, the more the flavors will really pull together in this tea. And probably the more the flower will bloom. It's a beautiful bloom. Do you like a, a spot of milk with your tea? Yeah. Just yeah? You're not gonna? Maybe. Maybe. All right, put a little milk in there. Boop, boop, boop. How about and, you? Um, I think I am gonna do a little milk. And do we want a sugar cube or do you want a honey, a honey spoon? Both. Okay. Both. There we go. Definitely. I'll just go with the honey spoon. All right, stir it around. You're not as sweet as I am. <laughs> no, sweetheart, I'm certainly not. I think you take the cake on that, <laughs> the cupcake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, ready to try it? A blooming tea? <laughs> That's also a good way to do it. Mm. Mm. Tea, cakes, scones, sandwiches. This is the best place ever. Well, I had a splendid time with you today here, Eliza. Me too. I know. It was so much fun. 
But it's not over yet. I have another surprise for you. But it's not today. You're going to have to wait. So stay tuned after the break and we will come back for our surprise. But do you want to send the viewers off with a, what kind of, how, what kind of excitement do you have about this tea party? Send them off with a little message. <laughs> we'll see you soon at your big surprise. I want to know. We're going to go ahead and eat, finish eating. Well, look at the time. It is tea time here at North Star in the library. And I must say, this tea party setup is nothing shy of exquisite. On the menu today, lemon scones, cucumber sandwiches, mini cupcakes, raspberry tea, and blooming tea. I'm actually not quite sure who's more excited, me or the girls. Well, let's not wait any longer. Let's get this Red Clay Royal Tea Party started. Hello, girls. How do you do? Are you guys all here for a red clay royal tea party? Yes. Well, come on in. You all look so lovely. Eliza is here with us today. Does everyone know why we're here? What did we do? We went on a cooking show and we had a tea party, did we not? It was so much fun, wasn't it? It was. And don't think I've looked so lovely? You guys all look so lovely. I love your tea party outfits. We're so excited to be here today. And I think it is time now to get into the real reason we're here, which is to get our gloves dirty and have a tea party, is it not? Do you like raspberry tea, dear? No, yes, please. It's blue. It's blue. Well girls, I had an absolutely splendid time here with you today and after today, I think tea time is going to become a tradition in my house every day. It should in yours as well. But there's one thing we mustn't ever forget after today. You're not cooking in style unless you're cooking in family, family style. style. Oh, perfect.